Okay, it's time uh, for another break from SPQR to get uh, something, a big box out of my way and onto my shelf. But more importantly, perhaps, uh, something that's not a war game out there during my uh, Geek of the Week week. This is Chicago Express. I've been looking forward to this in a lot of ways uh, since I picked up Actually, even before I picked up Pompas Railroads, I wanted this one. <laughs> it's very, very clearly the winsome design. I believe it came from originally a game called Wabash Cannibal, and that is sort of the special company in this one. The company that gets started late in the game. So, it's very clearly a winsome design, as I said, and it, uh, but with beautiful components that uh, Queen Games, you know, they're known for, for good component games. And one of the questions I have in my head is just how different from uh, Wabash Cannon, uh, from, from Pompas Railroads is this? There are some minor changes, there's no question there. But the basic flow of the game appears the same, in the sense that all the 18xx games are kind of similar. Well, but this seems more like when you look at 18AL or 18GA and say, ah, that's 1830. When you look at the whole span of 18xx games, they're not all the same in the same way that this is similar to Pompous. Uh, let me go through what happens in the game. For those of you who haven't looked at any of the Winsome games or this before. So, the goal, like any economic uh, simulation or game, is to grab the most cash and by the end of the game. And like the XX games, like uh, Pampas, you do that by investing in these rails. At the beginning of the game, four railroads are available, and one share of each will be auctioned off. It can go for no less than its productive capability at the beginning of the game, which uh, is just sort of this fixed value for each of uh, each of the different companies. <coughs> the uh, let me check to make sure I have. Okay. wanted to make sure I had enough Wabash counters because every other company has one additional train for its starting location. Wabash does not. Its train pool includes its starting location. All right. Um, so starting with, uh, I guess, the banker, you begin bidding on the railroads in order. First the Pennsylvania, then the B&O, then the CNO, then the uh, New York Central. And I don't have them in that order here. I have them more in their geographical order. I think that makes more sense because this initial bidding is only a factor at the beginning of the at the very beginning of the game. Uh, each player has an option to either bid the amount or higher or pass. Uh, and what, you go around, yeah, you continue until our, everyone's passed. Once you pass, you're out of that auction. You can't jump back in. And then once all the shares are out, you play by selecting an action each, uh, each round. And the different actions are an auction where you can bring out a share of a started company and it's set up and auctioned off for the amount of money that it goes for. Now, what's the minimum on these? The minimum bid is the current uh, is the current income divided by the number of shares already sold. So you can't get a really really cheap deal no matter what you. You cannot pay less than sort of what that's 
that share is going... Well, you will be paying more than that share is going to make on the next uh, next bid if it happen on on the next uh, dividends round if it just came out. Another option you have is to expand your company's railroad uh, railroad network, and that's these little trains here. And you mark these by marking uh, a box on this little track, which is kind of a neat little you know physical aspect of this. Again, better, I think, than the little cards that I got in Pampas. Well, when you build track, that means that you're allowed, uh, I believe, I don't remember how many. I think it's three rail, what, three little locomotives. You have to own a share of it. Uh, yeah, you're allowed to take basically three trains and place them into territories. And you pay a cost equal to the red number in the rail in on the choo choo here um, times the number of trains that are already in the space now only one railroad can go through woods or mountains so those and those tend to cost a little bit more in cities and plains and essentially cities industrial uh, industrial cities eh, that's not an industrial city which we got. Uh, Detroit is. Uh, those are uh, basically cities as well. In those, you have to pay a premium if other people have already reached there. So if there's already two companies there, you pay twice the cost to enter. The rules are not terribly well written for, as a reference. There's this nice little combined rule reference sheet, uh, including the one being placed. So yeah, if there's already two, you'd pay three times. Something bothered me about that. Uh, the third kind of action is a development action, which is this little house here, and that allows you to place a little house. Um, you can place it on track, that, a place where there's already a train, and you only get one. Yeah, it looks like you only get one. Uh, there has to be a train present, and in these normal areas, well, there's different areas. Let's take cities and mountains. They're the most normal. You place a house there next to wherever your train is, and you end up increasing the revenue of that train of that company by the value that the little house is on there. When you expand your track, you increase your revenue by the black number located on the choo-choo itself, just by entering there. If you enter an already developed area, you get the development bonus as well. So if you go into a city that's been developed, you get not only the bonus for the uh, location, but also the bonus because it's been developed. If you enter an industrial, they're a little different. The industrial uh, development moves, let's not play with Detroit, moves uh, a house forward on this track and increases the total bonus available in that city. Detroit Special, uh, players can't actually improve uh, or develop Detroit. It does so automatically. Well, that's pretty simple. And that is most of the game, actually. A um, couple other things that happen. Well, when two of these reach the red zone, and you can't keep buying once one's in the red, you have to go to a different one. You can't keep taking that action. You have to go to a different action. Once two of them hit that red zone, the turn takes a pause at the end of your turn, or at the beginning of the next person's turn, depending on how you want to look at it, and dividends are paid out. Dividends are equal to the amount that the railway makes, divided by the number of shares there are. Again, pretty simple actually. Uh, we got little counters here that indicate if a, eh, that's not very clear, that indicate if a railroad's got above the 50 line and then they start over again with that little marker. Um, all right, uh, what else do we have? Well, Detroit goes up one after, after the income phaser. 
Yeah, it looks like after the income phase, all the markers get reset and you rinse and repeat. What's special? Well, the one special thing here is the Chicago phase. Once a company goes into Chicago, two things happen. One, that company gets its income increased, of course, but that company gets a special dividend phase for just for itself and pays out. If that happens at the same time that there's going to be a normal dividend phase, it gets its first, and then the normal one goes on. The first time a company goes into Chicago, the Wabash Railroad is opened, and that's this guy over here on the board. Most of the railroads, and I'd flip one of these, but I've already set them up, have a different way of holding your holdings. Basically, the money is separated into uh, piles for the different piles of cash that there are, or different type denominations. But there's no real room for all these t uh, train tokens. And the rules are very specific. Do not flip over the Wabash one. <laughs> because that would upset the entire game. Um, there's nothing on the back, by the way. Okay. So once you reach uh, Chicago with one company, the Wabash is opened. After the special dividends paid out, a black locomotive is placed on Fort Wayne, over here, and they start with an income of one, unless Fort Wayne's been developed, in which case it could go up by two more to three. And the player who reached Chicago auctions off the first Wabash share. Uh, and makes the first bid. And then there's a normal uh, bidding on this. And the remaining Wabash share is available uh, for auction for the rest of the game. There are different amounts of cards. So for example, the CNO has six different uh, shares available. The BNO only has four. The Pen has three. The NYC has five. The Wabash has two. And there are also different amounts of trains available for each company. Uh, pretty simple game, no? All right. Well, I'm going to load this one up and then start playing.